A rapidly growing uh, money laundering scandal in Singapore, uh, now turning to China and privately held family offices. Robert Frank joins us now with more. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, Joe. Good to see you. Well, Singapore authorities freezing assets worth more than $2 billion in a money laundering probe that is quickly expanding. So far, they've seized 152 properties, 62 cars, lots of gold bars and jewelry. Ten people have been charged with laundering proceeds from illegal gambling and other operations. The suspects are all from China or have links to China. This scandal has a, exposed a dark side to the massive wave of wealth flowing out of China into Singapore. More than $1.5 trillion has poured into Singapore last year. The Chinese wealthy and private companies all moving money out of the reach of the government crackdowns and potential tensions over Taiwan. Singapore, of course, depends on its reputation for a clean and well-policed financial system. Authorities there are now working with the big banks to try to figure out where the gaps might have been. Officials also looking at the potential role of family offices. Those are the private arms of wealthy families. The number of family offices registered in Singapore has more than tripled during the pandemic to over 1,000. Family offices have minimum disclosure requirements. And until recently, they paid no taxes on investment gains in Singapore. So Singapore became a global hub for these family offices. Ray Dalio, uh, Sergey Brin of Google uh, all have family offices in Singapore. Question now is, do they start to crack down? Were they involved in this money laundering at all? But a huge number of family offices Why would family started. offices be formed in Singapore to begin with? Because I think of, like, shady Bitcoin operations that are in places like Singapore or beyond. Why in the world would you put your family office there? Singapore wanted capital, so they created a regulatory environment for family offices that was basically no taxes on capital gains if you had a family office, which is all their gains. And they made it very easy to register. So there were minimal disclosure requirements in terms of who you were, where your money came from. And they also wanted, Singapore wanted professionals managing that wealth. They thought it would be good for job creation and also that inflow of capital, which then could flow out and into So Singapore. they're the new Switzerland? Exactly, Switzerland. Now, Hong Kong battling for that as well. Dubai is a big family office capital. But family offices have trillions of dollars to invest. So all these big cities around the country, around the world, we're vying for that money. Now the question is, do you need more regulatory disclosure around that? Well, what happens to U.S. tax authorities who want to say, hey, your family office may be there, but you're not? Yeah, look, if you're a global, if you're a U.S. citizen, your global uh, income is still taxed. So it's really beneficial for, it was all, most of it, Chinese wealth that was creating family offices in Singapore and moving their money there. Chinese authorities cracking down on that big time. We saw the disappearance of a banker in China who right. was setting up a wealth management firm the in The family Singapore. offices, for example, in Dubai, though, yeah. are from are you European a families? Lot of Russians, a lot of a Russian lot of Russians have set up family offices in Dubai. Um, and Europeans, but a lot of the money going to Dubai and Singapore have become the wealth capitals of the world when it comes to family offices and just wealth flight and capital flight. And Switzerland is, is an also ran? What are you saying? Switzerland, now that the U.S. has better disclosure around those accounts, and, <laughs> uh -huh. and so but does what, Europe. What does that tell you? If you're going somewhere else because Switzerland that tells is you that tightly regulated, you don't want them knowing the, how much you're making. The hope that tells you that wealthy people love to hide money, and they just go to whatever country is going to be the most friendly. Now, Singapore, is I live in Singapore. They know everything. I mean, they surveil you. They know whose accounts are going. So it was surprising surprising to me that this money laundering scheme got as large as it did, went on for as long as it did, and then they just caught them. Some people said China urged them to crack down on it because China wants to keep capital. Interesting okay. story. Robert, thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm sure that the luxury accommodations are in Dubai and... I mean, compared to Davos. I mean, just saying. Um, Dubai you know, has the, the Dubai, most expensive Singapore, housing. Dubai, Singapore, you can actually go to a, join a golf club in Singapore now? over $600,000 they're getting for a golf membership in Singapore because there were so many wealthy people moving to Singapore wanting to play golf. That's what it cost. And so. would I know any of the architects? Are they nice? Would I know any of the uh, Bermuda grass? I mean, do you know anything about it? It's in the 18 island, holes. island of Sentosa. That's where they are. 18 it's holes. Nice. That's all you can I'm tell. I'm sure me. it does. For that amount, I would hope so. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Robert. <laughs>